Hi everyone, this is part three of the Chromapper tutorial series, and in this installment we will be going over the basics of 360 and 90 degree mapping. All right, so in the song info screen, there is a separate tab for any 360 degree levels, 90 degree levels, etc. So I started a 360 degree level, and it's based on my Expert Plus map. And by the way, to down map or to create duplicates, uh, what you'll do here is you'll just hit the copy button and it would copy what is my expert plus and if I want to down map it to an expert or a hard or, or what have you just click here save it and it, now it's created a duplicate and so then I can go through and I can start uh, down mapping as needed and if you ever want to delete a level just click here and it deletes it okay so let's open uh, this 360 degree level that I started So in this level, you'll see that we have some extra events here, the rotations that include or exclude the beat. So we'll get to those in a little bit on how we actually lay down the, the rotation effects, uh, but this is where they will show up visibly in the map. So I'm gonna to navigate to my first drop section. Now this is where I decided to build in what I call a traveling section. Now that's where I build rotations in a way that takes the player a full 180 degrees in one direction or the other. So in this case, we're starting front facing, which is the, the zero degree notation here. And we're gonna end up facing in, to the rear 180 degrees. And we're gonna, we're gonna take it to the right in this case. And now Chromapper is really great because it's made it so easy to build these rotations in. It's very simple. You don't really have to think about it. We have hotkeys for it and it makes a lot of sense. So what happens when you build rotations in, and what I've done here is I've built in a 45 degree rotation to the right by placing 15 degree rotations throughout this section. So I've, I've taken two beats from 132 to 134. That's the time that I've allotted for this 45 degree rotation. And that tends to be enough. You'll wanna give players enough time. But I don't do just a full, so I could do a, a full 45 degrees turn right here if I wanted to. I could just do that, but that would be a very sharp turn right away. So I like to spread out the turns. I will typically only, only lay down rotations in 15 degree intervals uh, just to keep them smooth. So let's see what this looks like. In the default mode of Chromapper, what happens is your, your camera view will rotate with the track uh, so that you don't get disoriented. So let's see what that looks like. So basically our, our view is staying the same, but you're seeing that I'm, I'm guiding the player through these turns that take them you know, uh, uh, 45 degrees right, 45 degrees right, until we get all the way around. All right, so now you see the, the rotation or the traveling section that I built. I wanna go through and show you how exactly I went about doing that. So let's navigate to drop 3A, and this is where I repeat or mirror What's, what's happening in drop 1A. So because I brought them all the way around to 180 in drop 1A, and I haven't done any rotations since then, you can see that here in drop 3A, we're still facing towards the rear of our play space. So I do want to bring them back to the front of their play space because I assume they've set it up that way for a reason. Um, all right, so let's get into it and let's see what that's going to look like. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of this wall don't need it and we're going to set up the turns starting on beat 356 now to indicate big turns like this 45 degree turns I'm going to do that in two ways first I'm going to use these big double hits which I don't normally use and so when, when I do use them the player should know okay that's what this means we're, we're turning now so if I always re reserve them for something like that, then it becomes an easy cue for the player. So I start with that. And, and by the way, it looks like I wanna set this up a little better. I'm going to just make this a regular side out to set them up. Okay, so I'm having them do a big turn left. And we know that we're between these two beats, 356 to 358, uh, we're turning them 45 degrees to the left. 
So this existing hit at uh, 357, I'm gonna get rid of that because it's now taking the place of my turn. And to indicate these turns, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use sidewalls. So let's go to the walls. Sidewalls that indicate a turn will show up on the opposite side of the track from the direction that you're turning. So here, because I'm turning left, my sidewalls are gonna be on the right. So I'm gonna create three sidewalls one for each turn, one, one for each 15 degree rotation that we're doing through this section. Then, to actually build the rotations, you will use hotkeys, either Q, E, or Shift Q, or Shift E. Now the difference between Q and E, Q, just hitting Q without the shift variation, that will send it 15 degrees to the left and it will exclude the current beat marker. So you can see that this wall that I placed here does not rotate. So if I delete that and then I did Shift-Q, then it would include the wall that's on that beat marker. So that's really the only difference between these two. You can, you can shift between them. Um, and by the way, the, these function just like, like objects. I use the hotkeys because they're simpler. And each time you serially hit one of these hotkeys, it'll just add a 15 degrees. So if I hit Q three times, I've just created a 45 degree turn. If I hit E, it subtracts that and starts going to the right. See that? So it makes it very easy to uh, create the turns. I tend to use the shift variation, just personal preference, um, but ultimately it doesn't matter too much uh, what you use. There are some, some neat effects you can do when you alternate between those two effects in, in short succession. I won't get into those, into those here, but you can play with that. So anyway, we're going to build one 15 degree rotation for each of these sidewalls. So we're gonna do Shift-Q, Shift-Q, Shift-Q. All right, so I built a 45 degree rotation to the left. And what does that look like? Okay. So plenty of time to, th to do this rotation, but now I got a problem. I did a big hit left, and the, this first hit at 358 is another left hit. So that is a flow breaker. So what I wanna do is I wanna select this next eight count section. And I want to flip it. So I did a mirror image. And of course, now it's set up correctly. I'm making them swing left, throwing their, their momentum left, and then I'm resolving that momentum back to the right. So it flows. Okay, so that's the basics of this turn section. We've, we're mostly done. Um, but we do want to make sure that each transition point is going to work. So what is this? Okay, so I know that 364 is when I want to take it left again. All right, so having that in mind, I, I, I know kind of the roadmap here. So let me set up that hit so that I can remember where I'm going. Because now I've got I've to work on this transition to make, it, make sure it flows. And, and once I do that, once I've smoothed out the transition, then I'll, I'll have an intact eight count section that I can repeat essentially four times to finish out this traveling section. All right, so where, where do I want to be here? I want to set up so that my arm, so that I'm on the right here, that I'm going to hit left. So let's look at this. So I think what I'm going to do is I think this guy is going to come up. So I'm going to have a left target hitting up that way. Um, I'm going to have this right target hitting down. And then I'm going to delete this and I'm going to bring this guy up. All right, so I, I've, I've sort of modified that uh, the little burst section here that I have. I've smoothed it out here at the end. I've thinned out the targets a little bit, but I haven't reduced the syncopation. So some of these double hits are taken out, but that's just to smooth out the flow. And as far as when I'm thinking about mapping and what, it, what matters most, always, always, always the flow matters most. So that, that matters more than uh, consistency, uh, more than whatever you're tracking to the certain musical elements. That is going to trump every single other consideration, in my opinion. So what does that look like? All right, so that, that should work. Everything seems to, seems to flow here. I've set up the, the arms uh, on the right side so they're, they're going to hit, hit left. And that means that now uh, that I've got that set up, 
I can come back here and I can start with my wall selection. And by the way, the, the rotation events over here, they are included in this range select tool that I mentioned earlier. However, they are not included in the box select. That is another reason that I prefer the range select function over box select. So I'm going to select all the way up here. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm all the way to here. Copy that. And then now I'm going to show you a cool trick called paste and replace. So I want to paste everything that I just put on my clipboard, but I don't want to have to go through and delete everything that's, that's here in front of me. So to save me the trouble, I can do control shift V. And what that does is it deletes everything in the range of my clipboard. So whatever I have on my clipboard, wherever it would cop, wherever it would paste, it deletes whatever is there already and copies what I have in my clipboard. So it saves you a step. Very useful when you're doing 360 mapping, uh, very useful for down mapping. So that is a, a cool trick that I'm very glad that Chrome Mapper has. Okay, so what does this look like? Okay, so it looks like that works and I can do it again. Let's do that. Okay, now what often happens at the end of these uh, 32 count sections, your first three eight counts will be pretty much identical. You can usually use the same pattern if you'd like, um, but the last one may have a little bit of a difference that you may want to account for. So that is what's happening here. And that means that I can't just copy and paste what I did before. So I'm gonna give it a little bit more thought. I'm gonna build my, my traveling section again. Um, cause I, I know that I need to travel 45 degrees uh, again, cause I'm at the 45 degree mark. I still need to come left a little bit more. So let's build in a turn. And then of course I'm going to resolve it the same way I was doing before with that right hit. And it looks like that'll do it. So it wasn't much of an adjustment. Basically I just couldn't paste everything that was on my clipboard. So they hit right, they hit left, they hit right, and then I use these bombs to sort of guide the player's arms over and around for this left diagonal hit. And that's a good way to use bombs. I'm a, I'm a big believer in less is more. Um, and bombs are kind of a nice way, if, if you use them sparingly, to uh, control a player's arm movement in a way that does not require any targets. Okay. That is one way to do 360 degree mapping. It is by no means the only way. I will say just a few tips. So a few tips to keep in mind when you're doing 360 degree mapping, traveling sections, wide play, sometimes I like to call it. Make sure the, the rotations are readable and comfortable for the player. Generally, you want to be hitting in the direction of the rotation, even if it's just a single lane rotation. You wanna make sure that the player is able to see and react to the objects that are coming at them comfortably without needing to jerk around or, or feel like they're being blindsided because that could be perceived as a flow breaker and that's what you want to avoid. So if you have the player hitting left, but then you've got targets that are coming uh, from the right side over here, their attention, their periphery may not capture that and you know they'll be uh, caught off guard. Um, also, if you're doing a big rotation, you want to give the player enough time to rotate comfortably and be in a position to react to the next targets that are coming. So in these sections that I was building, I was giving them a full two beats to do this 45 degree rotation. And that should tend to be enough. Typically, of course, it depends on, on the tempo, speed of the song, um, and you'll want to test it repeatedly to make sure it's comfortable. And also keep in mind that the players are wearing headsets, right? And so if you're building wide play or rotations in a way that's causing them to jerk their head back and forth a lot, uh, I wouldn't recommend that. that. That could just cause unnecessary strain and, and possibly injury. So do keep that in mind. And finally, as you are getting into 360 degree mapping and, and wide play like this, which really opens up the pattern variety in a, in a really cool way, uh, make sure you're testing your map more. It, it is different from just your standard front facing mapping. So you want to make sure you're getting a feel for what works 
and what doesn't in your particular mapping style. All right, everyone. Well, I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions for me, uh, you can find me on Discord. And of course, we will include a lot of links uh, down below uh, that should be helpful. Thanks so much.